Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining me on this drive today. This is my 2024 Model Y Long Range. This has the full self-driving package, but everyone recently, this is like we're at the end of uh, October right now, everyone would have recently received an email from Tesla or just noticed that they have a month's free full self-driving trial for the next 30 days. So Tesla kind of like launched that to all the cars that have the full self-driving computer. They've kind of given everyone an extra month. They did this earlier in the year and now they're doing it again they have some new updates and features that they've implemented with this new software the software that i'm running is the f 12.5.4.1 i think that's the latest one now i just got back not in this car but my wife has the same car as this one and we had that full we had that free trial on our trip so we did like an 1800 mile trip in that car with full self-driving i want to point out a few things that you want to be aware of on full self-driving. I kind of had to learn the hard way, but I want to share this information with you as you're using full self-driving and like autopilot, auto steer kind of uh, has some of these same quirks and features as well. So one thing I want to point out here, if I look at the uh, screen, I go to the control panel, I go to autopilot. You see here, uh, if you have the full self-driving computer in your car, there's three different settings on autopilot that you can set up. One is the full self-driving which this one's set up on. There's auto steer, and then this first one here is called traffic aware cruise control. Now, I've never really used just the traffic aware cruise control. I've always either used uh, auto steer, which is like, you know, autopilot, and then using full self driving. Now, when you're using either auto steer or full self driving on your car, that's where the car is like steering for you, basically. And then it, it's always going to have the traffic aware cruise control where it's staying behind the car in front of you keeping your maintained speed and so you don't have to worry about messing with the speed it just does that so that those two features auto steer and traffic aware cruise control kind of make up autopilot where it makes it really comfortable driving on the highway because you don't have to like you know worry about steering or speed you just basically are monitoring the car that's a really cool feature um, it was very nice to have full self-driving enabled on our road trip because with full self-driving enabled you can change lanes you just turn, put like you put your blinker on or it'll put your it'll put the blinker on for you and change lanes you don't have to re-engage it if you only have auto base autopilot and you have it on auto steer and you want to change lanes you have to you basically turn your blinker on you you turn you know you change lanes and you have to re-engage autopilot every time you change lanes which is kind of annoying i think and so i don't really like that i like having full self driving where it's more smooth lane changes enhanced autopilot gives you that feature but uh, auto steer doesn't now here's here's kind of the quirk I want to point out here and that is when you're driving on the now when you're driving on the freeway and you need to pass someone so for example uh, like take this this is an example right um, most of the freeway that I was driving on was 80 miles an hour was the posted highway speed limit on the freeway and so i was going around 80 miles an hour i'd have my cruise control you know i'd have uh you know my autopilot my full self driving enabled it's driving i have my i have my destination in i would recommend when you're using full self driving put in your destination into the navigation system so that way it can navigate for you it knows when to change lanes it knows when to get off the freeway on the freeway and it just makes it easier otherwise you're gonna get frustrated with full self-driving if you don't have your destination in so that's one recommendation there but when you when it when it's steering for you whether it's under full self-driving or autopilot and you like manually engage the accelerator you can still touch the accelerator you can still speed up if you touch the brake it disengages it you can also engage the blinker yourself so if you want to change lanes and it's not changing lanes um, commonly, like if it's in the in the left lane, the fast lane, and, and you want to get move over, sometimes I would engage that just to get it over quicker because there's someone up coming coming behind me quicker than the car can see. Um, so you can still like make initiate lane changes. You can still accelerate, but if you accelerate too quickly, like here's an here's an example. Right? See this semi truck in front of me here. Let's say if I have autopilot engaged and I move over to the left lane, okay? I put the blinker on, we move over to the left lane. And if there's a car coming up coming up on me like really fast behind me and I need to like get around this truck really quick, I can just push down the pedal, the accelerator pedal, speed up and go around and go around this truck. 
Well, when I'm already going like 82, 83 miles an hour on the freeway, and I'm trying to do this maneuver here where I'm just passing a vehicle and I want to get over, if you manually push down the pedal and you get up to say like around 90 miles an hour, the car freaks out. It starts saying, take control immediately, red lights flash, and it locks you out of auto steer for the rest of your drive. That happened twice to me. Now, I wasn't like, I wasn't purposely trying to speed. I was just trying to go around someone and I wanted the car to speed up. I needed it to go faster than my set speed. And so I floored it. I pushed down the accelerator and you simply push down the accelerator just a little bit in these cars and you jump 10, 12 miles an hour like that. You know, even going 80 miles an hour, you jump to 90 really quickly. So you have to be careful. So that's a word of warning is you get this takeover immediately. It locks you out of auto steer and you know, when I'm on the freeway now I can't engage cruise control I can't engage the auto steer I can't engage full self driving I'm basically have to drive manually for the rest of my drive well there is a work around that and I want to show you that so if you go back into the control screen here and you go to autopilot if you don't want to pull over to the side of the road put it in park get out and get back in that's how you can re-enable it you can go into the autopilot screen here and if you you can touch on you can you can change from full self driving or auto steer you can change it down to the lowest setting which is traffic aware cruise control and when you do that that will at least give you the cruise control feature so you can at least push down the stock here once and it'll engage the cruise control and you'll have the uh, traffic aware cruise control where it'll stay you know behind the car or in front of you it won't change lanes, it won't do the steering, you'll have to steer, but that's at least a way that you can do that without having to pull over to the side of the road and get out of the car and get back in. I had to actually had to do that one time. It happened to me once, so I took the next exit. It was in a rural area, and I was able to just to pull over. I got out of the car, you know, put it in park, got out of the car, waited a few seconds, got back in, and then it was able to work again. Also, the take control immediately warning on the screen can happen if you ignore the monitoring system so this camera up here monitors if you're if you're looking ahead if you have a hat on or sunglasses on it can't see your eyes and so it will, it will nag you to you know touch the wheel to keep pressure on the steering wheel so it knows that you're paying attention well if you ignore those nags enough time you'll also get that take take over immediately warning and you won't be able to use full self driving or auto steer for the rest of your drive which is super annoying when it does that so those two ways are ways that can get you locked out of your driving now if you're in like a let's say you're in a busy city environment you don't want to pull over there's not a easy way to get off the freeway to put it in park go into the autopilot screen and then downgrade it to traffic aware cruise control you can do that while the car is still moving. Uh, you can't change the auto steer or full self driving setting until the car is in park again. So you'll need to, like the next time you stop, you can re-engage auto steer or full self driving. You can just select it right here and you'll be good to go to use it again. I don't like that Tesla does that, um, especially because here's another example, guys. Let's say the speed limit, and then this happened, this happened several times on my trip where the cameras read a 55 mile an hour speed zone. It really wasn't 75, 55 miles an hour. It just said trucks pulling trailers, towing, they can only go 55 miles an hour. Whereas the set speed limit was 75 miles an hour. So I kept my speed limit at 75 because I wasn't towing. I was just in this car. However, you can go 20 miles an hour over the you can go 20 miles over the speed limit. Like I could go 75 and a 55 and it would give me no problem. It was like when you get up to 90 miles an hour in the car is when it starts freaking out and it doesn't like that. So so auto steer and full self driving is not going to work if you just, even for the briefest second, accelerate really quickly to go around someone and you know slow back down so you have to be aware of that on the freeway because if you push down the pedal this these cars have a lot of torque and the instant torque and they accelerate very quickly and it's going to get you into trouble with the autopilot system so this setting right here it's the automatic set speed offset it kind of like reads the traffic and it kind of just chooses its own speed limit 
and with this kind of new version, this new software, um, it it always asks you to enable that. So every time you get into the car, it asks, oh, try automatic speed set offset. Well, the problem with that is it speeds a little too fast for my taste. Like, for example, on this freeway right here, it's 70 miles an hour. I have it set like at 73. I'm just keeping up with traffic right here. It wants to go 80 miles an hour. Like, it wants to go 80 and cars regularly go that fast here and there's a lot of times I don't want to go that fast all right guys I want to show you something else um, this is a product that I found on the Tesla website uh, if you can see right here I don't know if you can see this this is a little external battery charger and what this does is it's it actually will charge your phone wirelessly so if you take your phone and it's magnetic it'll actually I have like an iPhone 14 here if I push it on the back of the phone here, or clip it on the back of the phone, it will just start charging it wirelessly. It also opens up, I, I thought this was kind of cool, it kind of opens up, you could charge two devices, like you could charge like, a, you could put a device here and you could put a device here, so you could put your like your AirPods, you could set your AirPods here and you could set your phone on this as well. It also has USB-C charging outlet, so this is how you would charge it. This is also how you would uh, you could plug your phone into it directly. But the cool thing about it that I like is it actually fits right here on your charging mat in your car, and it charges. There's a little there's a little battery meter right here, it tells you what the charge is. So if I just set this there all the time now, and it just it just keeps it 100% charged. So that way, if I ever need like if I'm going somewhere for a, a you know, let's say I'm going to like a sporting event or something. I'm going to be using like my phone a lot or my phone's low on charge. I can grab this from my car, take it with me, and I can charge my device up with me. And I already, I already have it and it's already charged up. And it's, it's just wirelessly charging there. I don't have to worry about wires. So I thought this was a really cool product from Tesla. They have it in a couple different colors, but it's on their website. It's in their uh, like accessory, car accessories store. But I thought that was a, a cool little product that Tesla offers. I like that it's wireless and it charges wirelessly right there on the charging mat. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, guys, that's some of the full self-driving uh, tips I wanted to pass along as far as the nags. Like if it's nagging you to pay attention, don't ignore that. Don't accelerate too fast when you're on the highway because if you hit that if you hit that kind of speed limit, I think it's around 90 miles an hour. If you hit that, it's going to lock you out for the rest of your trip. So, guys, be aware of that. Uh, Stay tuned for more videos. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comment. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.